Hey friends, it is a rainy, kind of gloomy day, and I figured that was the perfect day to film a slow-moving John Bible study. So if you don't know, we just started a new series going through John. We're just inching our way at a snail's pace through John, going as deep as we possibly can through little YouTube videos. And then obviously, as always, I'm just one person. We can make this Bible study so much deeper and so much richer if you join me and add to this Bible study in the comments. And so we're just on that next little pericope of the prologue. My aim is to study with you guys today, verses six through eight. And last time I noticed when I was reviewing the footage and sending it to my editor, I talked a lot at the camera and we didn't necessarily Bible study together. And so today I kind of wanted to go in depth and show you how I know when to look up stuff, what resources I use, fishing with you as I've called it before. So let's begin. So if I was Bible studying today, just these three verses by myself, verses six through eight, I would read them once over and then just ask myself, do I have any questions? Did anything not make sense? There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Sounds like the beginning of a small short story or something like that. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. Now, if you remember from last episode, if you guys haven't seen that, I have it linked at the end of this video. There's a lot of themes and metaphors, things that are repeated throughout John, and we really, really want to pay attention to that. And obviously here in the prologue, the prologue, by the way, is verses one through 18. A lot of the themes, a lot of the important theological truths are introduced here. This is a very important part of John. And so here we see something repeated multiple times. And you guys know if you've been here for a while, if anything is repeated basically ever, but especially if it's repeated in a small area, like this is just three verses and light and witness are repeated over and over again, you gotta pay attention to that. And so if I was doing this by myself, I would probably circle every time light is used in these three verses and color it with the same color, but then also witness. I would circle or underline, make those two two very distinctive. And if you noticed light, that theme was introduced in our previous pericope in the previous paragraph, but then also it's gonna be carried throughout this prologue and throughout the book. So just keep that in mind if you're going to pick thematic colors studying through John. So we've got light and witness that already we see repeated, but I would also ask, like I have a general idea of what light is. And we talked about last time how it, it kind of points to Genesis one and God saying, let there be light. And then there was light, you know, all of that. But witness, like what is this whole witness? Thing. And so here is where I would personally love to do some sort of word study on witness. Typically, if I want a really quick word study on something, I just grab my Bible dictionary. So let me get that. Oh, by the way, I am using Tyndale Bible dictionary. Do they have anything on witness? Okay, wow, they actually have a lot. Okay, so why I grab this one before I grab my other Bible dictionaries is because I like how they oftentimes will split things up on like witness in the Old Testament to like witness in the New Testament. Can you guys see this? And then they also tend to have a summary little entry. Typically with reference books like this, you can just pay attention to like the first two to three sentences and that's a good summary of what they're gonna break down in detail in the following paragraphs. The first couple sentences says, one who tells what he or she has seen or personally experienced, often in a court of law. The term may also refer to the testimony the person has given. So very much in a legal sense, a witness. Now we are in the New Testament, so let's see what they have to say about witness in the New Testament. In the New Testament, the various words for witness are mainly related to the verb martyria, which we're gonna look up what Greek word this is in a second. Meaning to bear witness, to be a witness. Oh yeah! The word martyr shows the ultimate form of witness and the Christians have sacrificed their lives lives because of their witness for Jesus Christ. John the Baptist was both a witness and a martyr. As the forerunner of the Messiah, his mission was to bear witness to the light and to identify the Lamb of God. Whenever you hear Lamb of God, I want you to just like your brain to instantly think of the Passover symbolism, the sacrificial nature of Jesus's role. And they give references John 1, 7 through 8, which is what we're studying today. And then also 19 through 36. Now, the easiest way for you to look up the word here that is used in John and to see if it's that same root word that leads to martyr would be to go just on Bible Hub. And I show this all the time. I just type into Google, I type in Bible Hub, and then I'll type in whatever verse we're in. So we're in John 1, 7 through 8. So Bible Hub, just tap that. Now, when you're on Bible Hub, you can just click 
Greek right here. And here is what we would call an interlinear Bible. You've got the original languages here in the New Testament, it's the Greek, and then you've got the English translation right next to it. He came as a witness. So we're here and oh look. So it's Strong's 3141 Martyria. Do you see that? That's the root of where we get martyr. Then I look at the concordance entries. There's also print concordances. This one's just so accessible and easy. Its definition is testimony, witness, evidence, reputation. And then you can see down here all the different verses and concordance entries for the words usage throughout the Bible. So now let me make sure that all of these times that witness is translated is the same word. Okay, yeah, cool. So all of the references are the same Greek word. That's good. My Bible, I already have this prologue like set up Part and colored and stuff with colors. So that means I can't use like markers or highlighters over this super well in this in these three little verses that we're seeing today. But that means I'll just use some crayons. And y'all know my favorite crayons to use are these thick twistables. He was a man sent by God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness. So I got them all underlined with the same color because my Bible's filled up with notes. I'm gonna do this right here. And take my notes on just this word at the bottom of my page, because this is like the last little bit of space I have over here. I'll write my notes with this, and then I'll color it in with the same color so that my brain just knows to connect them. And obviously it pops off the page because it's different than all the other colors I've used. Okay, so I just wrote the Greek words, the two versions, and showed how it was the same root word, and then I wrote where we get martyr or testimony. So the notes are not perfect. Y'all know I'm a really big believer in your Bible notes. Do not have to be perfect. They're there as a function to help you next time you're reading this passage. They aren't there to look pretty or to be some performative, you know, act to earn God's love. They're truly just there to help take us to the next level in our Bible studies next time. So always keep that in mind, but let's keep moving. At this point, now that we've kind of looked at this concept of the word and kind of gotten a better idea idea of the word itself, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I still don't necessarily know why this concept of him being a witness was used. We've looked at the definition of a witness in a dictionary, we've looked at the actual word and the translation of the word, but now we need to know why is this particular word used? And so for that, I would turn to a commentary. This is the NAC, can y'all see that? There we go. NAC, New American Commentary. What I'm gonna do is just look at what they say for this verse. So, and if you guys have never used a commentary, that's like a book by book, like volumed set commentary. Typically it will break down like verse by verse, words, concept. This one in particular can have like really big, like articles of an intense study of something just in the middle of its commentary. But as you guys can see, here's all the commentary and then down here are all the footnotes. So if you wanna read more about something that they're referencing, this is where you grow your library and spend a ton of money. Here they do talk about a martyr, how he's namely called a witness or a martyr, and they give us a footnote to something that looks really good. For an extended discussion of witness, see A. Trite's The New Testament Concept of Witness, Cambridge University Press, 1977, particularly pages 91 through 92. So it's a 90 plus page book on just the concept of witness in the New Testament. Isn't that crazy? Like this is where we can really geek out. But throughout the fourth, gospel, John, the role of the evangelist assigned to the baptizer is that of a witness. Although John certainly was sent to baptize, he kind of seems to prefer the designation John the witness and gives a bunch of verse references for it. Given the importance of the theme to bear witness in this gospel, oh yeah, that is a theme in this gospel. The focus of John's testimony was to bear witness to Jesus. In the prologue, this witness is given in terms of the logos, the word, and the true light, like verse nine. In the fourth gospel, light is a very important theme and Jesus Jesus refers to himself as the light of the world. So this helps us once again, and I'll probably write this in my Bible, lean into the theme here for John, the role that he has as a witness, as a testimony of who Jesus is. The main theme verse for John is chapter 20, verse 31, where he explicitly says, I write this book to you that you might believe and have a life because of that belief. So we see that the heart of the gospel is really for that witness, for us to believe because 
because of John's witness, the disciples' witness. Also notice here that he came to bear witness. There's this sense of where he's almost contrasted to the first couple verses here at the beginning of John, where in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. There was no coming necessarily. There was no being made. Jesus was there at the beginning, you know? There's this sense of where John came to bear the witness. All of that language repeated over and over again is almost like it's in contrast. I would argue it is directly in contrast. It's chosen very specifically. Remember, here in the New Testament, these texts were really expensive to copy, to preserve, to write. None of these words are there by mistake. He came because he wasn't at the beginning. He's not Jesus. And that what brings us back to the truth there in verse nine. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. And so we see here over and over again, those two main themes, witness and light, that we'll see all throughout the rest of the gospel reiterated over and over again. I know I just used an expensive commentary. So let's see about a cheaper commentary. This is my Bible knowledge commentary. This is like my quick grab. You know, it's like the cheap pens in your junk drawer in your kitchen. You know those? Like those you use way more than your fancy Bible pens over here. These thingies, you use your junk drawer pens in your kitchen a lot more than you use these because these have a special function. This is almost like that. Like this is around, this is easy to access. There's only two volumes. One volume is the Old Testament, one volume is the New Testament. Let's see what the Bible knowledge commentary had. Hmm, it's got like, you know, all of these notes right here on just these three verses. <gasps> Hey, this adds some stuff like in almost like a clearer, better way than this expensive commentary. This thing was probably like 30 to 50 bucks on Amazon. Look, okay, they say, John the Baptist was sent for people's benefit to be an additional pointer to the truth of Jesus. They say, people in sin are in such darkness that they need someone to tell them what is light. John's goal was that all men might come to trust in Jesus. I love that. That makes a little bit more sense on why this witness concept is so important, that John was bearing witness. Now, it looks like in the coming verses, we're going to be looking at this idea of light even more, coming into the world, the world rejecting him, etc. So that will be a really good study. Keep your eyes open for that. Ooh, maybe I'll have to do it in December because I don't know if I've said this yet, but Joseph and I are gonna do Bible study with me shortly little Bible studies every single day, December 1st to the 25th. So keep your eyes peeled for those coming out. I'm so excited. Make sure you're subscribed. It's free. And if you turn on the notifications, you'll be notified when I post videos, especially when December hits and they're coming every single day. The goal ultimately is to teach you skills to take your Bible study to the next level so that you can do this on your own and taste, feel, see the Lord in your life, knowing that you are seen and loved. So many people aren't in their word. They're not reading the Bible. And when they face issues, they write to their wallet first or they run to their friend first or they run to social media first instead of the word and if we truly believe it's true we'll run there first and so that's my heart that's my mission my passion here on youtube if you want to learn more about the skills on how to read the bible and really grasp how to be faithful and understand the bible check out this playlist here and if you've been here for a while make sure you've seen everything in it this is some of like the meaty juicy stuff that i care the most about and i'll see you guys in this playlist bye guys